the Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And every day at this time, OBMMI, they provide the most comprehensive, accurate, timely, and interactive analysis of pricing ever conducted in the mortgage industry, calculated from actual locked rates with consumers across 35% of all mortgage transactions nationwide. They don't tell us points paid, points received, or APR. They tell us the number you need to put in your mortgage calculator to find out exactly what your principal and interest payment will be. And if you don't have a mortgage calculator, no stress there either. You can get one. Ron is my lender.com. Ron is my lender.com. What did rates do on Friday? Well, it looks like a lot of red arrows. And this is one of the times that we like red arrows. Conventional loans, 30 year fix down 6.751. Jumbo, 30-year fix, down 7.071. FHA loans, down 6.567. The VA loan, best loan on the market for our veterans with with no down payment, 6.263. USDA loan, that was the only one that was up on all of them, 6.575. That was up quite, uh, that was up a little bit, yeah, up uh, three and a half basis points. Now, remember, even though I tell you the VA loan is the, the is the best loan for the veterans with no money down, everybody should be looking at the home select, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Don't know if it's right for everybody, but it is worth exploring. If you want information or our, our feelings on what's going on in the mortgage market, every day as early as the data allows, we put out a report, rsrmarketminute.com, rsrmarketminute.com. You can get a hold of that report. Let's see what's going on in the markets today as we speak right now. We're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, if I can see my screen here, is uh, up 22.35. We'll look at the 10-year Treasury down two basis points, basically flat. That is the yield, the interest rate. The bond, the mortgage bond, that's up three basis points, 101.05. And everything is just kind of quiet today, other than Ron Siegel Radio. So here's why is because we've got the Fed starting their two-day meeting. That's coming up tomorrow. They start that meeting tomorrow. Wednesday, about 11 o'clock our time, they will give their uh, decision on what they're doing with rates. Going to probably stay flat. Nothing's going to really change at all on the rates. At 11.30 our time, the fireworks starts. That's when Jerome Powell will have a press conference, and that's generally when we start seeing some of what the the Fed is thinking about the future. Now, we already know that the economy is slowing down. The question mark will be how far are they going to wait for, how bad are they going to wait for things to get before they take action? Just throw that out there for you. So we're watching all of that. We're going to have a lot this week, though. Case Shiller Home Price Index, FHA Home Price Index. And the Job Openings and Labor Transition Report comes out on Tuesday. The ADP Employment Report, pending home sales in the Fed meeting, are are going to come out on Wednesday. So ADP Report, you know, even though they've got some of the best data out there, it doesn't get any any attention. Pending home sales will. Thursday, the initial jobless claims come out, and the big daddy of them all for this week, will be the BLS jobs report that comes out on on Friday. Now, this no, this report gets the most publicity and is the most inaccurate report we have. I have no idea why why they they just love this report, but it could be because of some of the comments from uh one of the comments that I heard from the late Essie Adibi. And I asked him one time about some of the economic numbers and why they use some of them that are so meaningless. And he said to me, Ron, the issue is, is that they're consistent. So we continue to use the same numbers over and over again. That particular issue we were talking about that day happened to meet the mean home, the home sales prices, but the mean price it doesn't mean anything. It only talks about the mix of homes being sold, but because they track it, they track it. So the BLS report, the reason that they share it is because they track it month over month over month. We find out over the next couple of months how inaccurate it was. 
but the report and the headline are what drives things. So it's going to be a rocky road on Friday. Who knows how inaccurate the report will be that they share with us, but let's talk a little bit about it. So first off, let's talk about the Fed. They kick off their two-day meeting with their statement, Jerome Powell press conference on Wednesday starting. Again, I told you 11 o'clock for their, their statement. 11.30 is the meeting. We're not expecting a rate cut until September 18th. That's when we really think about it. So there is, when the Fed goes before their meetings, they all go into this quiet period. So they're not allowed to make any public comments. So how do they get around it? Every Fed chair has what they call a mole. Right now, the Fed mole is Nick Timoros, who writes for the Wall Street Journal. Throughout history, the Fed has used figures like this to prep the markets for what they're going to do at the next meeting to eliminate big surprises in the market. They don't want the surprises. Just last night, Timoros wrote an article, a Fed rate cut is finally within view. Within the article, Timoros explains that a July cut would be too soon. So we know they're not going to cut on Friday, on, on, on Wednesday. But the Fed will likely prep the markets for a September 18th rate cut for three main reasons. Number one, inflation over the last quarter has shown progress and has given the Fed the confidence they need that inflation is going to get to their 2% target. Number two, the labor market is starting to cool with the unemployment rate rising each of the last three months, now at a 4.1%. Number three, what keeps Powell up at night is waiting too long to cut rates and causing unnecessary economic weakness and potential recession. Bottom line, we expect the Fed to leave all the rates the same. They're going to have a dovish tone, acknowledging the progress on inflation, cooler labor market, and a sign of a slowing economy. So let's look at a preview of what the jobs report will say. The market is expecting ADP and BLS reports to show 149,000 175,000 jobs created respectively for July, with the unemployment rate to remain at 4.1%. The jobs report is always a wild card, as we have gone over many times, as they have had an issue of overstating job growth and then revising it lower in the following two months for an average negative 50,000 revision each month this year. If we see really high headline job creation figure, that could derail the bond market optimism. On the other hand, if we see the number of jobs created come in around estimates or disappoint and the unemployment rate unexpectedly rises, it will likely be a full-on party in the bond market. The unemployment rate has risen each of the last three reports to 4.1%, the highest level in almost three years. What is expected to remain at 4.1% if the unemployment rate were to rise to 4.2, it would surprise the majority of Fed members. At the last meeting, the summary of economic projections showed that two Fed members didn't see unemployment rate getting above 3.8 to 3.9, while 14 didn't see it getting above 4 to 4.1, with the median 4. With it currently at 4.1, many are likely already surprised, but a rise to 4.2 would certainly raise the eyebrows of 16 of the 19 Fed members and elicit action, potentially even a 50 basis point cut in September. I would not be surprised at all to see it go up to that 4.2. Why? Because so many people are broke. See, what happens is, unfortunately, the way these, the, the, the unemployment number comes, it comes out of the household survey, which is a little different than the BLS report. I'm not going to get into that today. But what, what actually happens is if somebody says they're not out looking for work, they're no longer unemployed. Now, if they can't make their mortgage payment, if they can't make their car payment, if they can't make their credit card payments, they can't make their, their buy now, pay later payments, what do they start doing? Going out and looking for work. Add that to the people that are getting laid off and you get more people coming back into the workforce but not getting a lot of jobs. That's what's happened in the last couple of months is we've seen two and 300,000 people added to the unemployment rolls and even though we haven't seen that many created, that's what causes the unemployment number to increase because there's more people out there. Would not surprise me to see that go up again just because of some of the people that might be starting to look for work now. That is the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990.